welcome you all to climate channel climate conversation climate actions pathways with kamrul chaudhry episode 19 today international biological diversity day and marking this day we have already heard a good news from g7 environment and climate ministerial conference yesterday the good news is they have committed to stop financing fossil fuel and also supporting renewable energy and also they have committed pledge to protect conserve our biological diversity at least 30% they will protect globally 80% domestically all seven g7 countries they have made this pledge and also they will raise their ambition in terms of mitigation and also approaching net zero and also regarding 100 billion dollar mobilization of resources for anna from 2020 they have committed to raise their climate finance ambition raise their support for the developing countries especially the most vulnerable countries so without much ado i would now like to kick off the conversation with our eminent economist and chief negotiator of bangladesh dr kazim kuchan ahmed to initiate the conversation philip bhai thank you kamrul islam choudhury i thank all the participants and wish them well i will i will initiate as you say initiate the discussion uh, today is the international day for biological diversity so that's a very important day and that has been discussed by the ministerial also and they have uh, committed to protect conserve the biological diversity although up to 30% but i think that's a good start uh the key questions of course related to things i think but we have been discussing it over the over and over and over, over year yes after years one is um, mitigation ambition raising of ambition the other is financing of course the financing should be used in a balanced manner between uh, adaptation and mitigation now on the ambition thing the new ndcs that are coming there there i don't know if the um, uh, if this ministerial has made any any um, commitments or uh, any any uh, indications of what they might be doing but this is extremely important i think that we should review uh, in five years time every five years if not even earlier because uh, we should see what's happening and then take action and ipcc is there to tell us the scientific side of it and as of now we don't have much time left unless we raise our ambition very very significantly and this is good thing uh, that the ministerial has uh, proposed or committed i don't know if they have committed it's very good that they will stop financing um fossil fuels coal and so on i think that's a very good good start so we should move forward and uh, there is a proposal that the uh, coal use of coal should be stopped by 2030 by the developed countries and for the other countries it may be somewhat later but some of the countries may be in very great difficulty because they don't have options so in their case uh, unless they are assisted fin- financially and technologically they may not be able to do much transition from whatever they are using biomass and so on to renewables so that will be a very tricky question now on the financing i think the three uh, of course uh, before that of course adaptation i think we have to also raise uh, adaptation ambition and that's that's important and the goal should be set we have not been 
uh, doing that very very effectively. Uh, this is an area that's uh, important. Now, on the financing of it, 100 million was committed in 2010 in Cancun. Uh, it would be uh, from 2020. 2020 has gone by and uh, progress has been rather limited. Now the ministerial has uh, again uh, made a commitment that they will try to ensure this financing, that's good news. But I am not very sure because uh, so far, it's only 20% of that with uh, GCF and other financing, I don't know, maybe another 10 million billion or so. So it's 30. So it's 30% of the commitment. So we should now see what's happening. Uh, of course, the, the G7 summit will, will happen and hopefully they will uh, improve upon improve upon whatever proposal has been made. Hopefully, hopefully not, but the farm, farm commitment probably will come come from there. And then, of course, Glasgow is there. So I think that's by way of uh, introduction. I'll I'll stop here and hear uh, from uh, uh, from the other participants. Uh, so just one one more thing: the adaptation, loss and damage, and uh, and. Uh, displaced people due to uh, climate change uh, disasters. These are three things lumped together, but I think that's, uh, that's creating problem. I think adaptation, beyond adaptation is loss of future. So that may be there, but I'd like to see displaced, displacement uh, treated separately. Uh, we could not get it into the Paris Agreement, although it was COP decision. But this is a problem many countries, including Bangladesh, uh, are facing uh, an increasing avalanche of people getting uh, displaced. Uh, so that is going to be extremely difficult for them uh, to be able to adapt. So there is a, there is a big question. We should uh, bring that into discussion as well. I stop. Thank you, Philip, uh, for setting the tone of the conversation. Uh, in fact, today, uh, our biological diversity um, negotiation, um, SB, has also started. And uh, they are now negotiating uh, text um, uh, line by line uh, from today. So that SB, um, because uh, we are going to have in October the COP15 of uh, biological diversity in Kunming, China. So for that, the framework, biological diversity framework for 2030 is going to be crafted and there's textual negotiation is now on. Uh, hopefully uh, we can have a uh, framework uh, for biological diversity uh, this year come October. So uh, that is also a good news and G7 and, uh, ministerial also endorsed that. And, uh, they are also looking forward and also Z77, China um, and also developing countries are also um, uh, engaging in this uh, negotiation. So there is going to be this year, not only Glasgow Conference of the Parties uh, COP26 on climate change, but also Biological Diversity Conference uh, COP15 this year. So there are going to be synergies a uh, lot of synergies this year and um, that has also been reflected in the outcome uh, omnique of the G7 countries. Uh, Jamie, you are um, obsessed with uh, biological diversity. So it is your passion uh, and also you are um, in uh, climate uh, parallax. Uh, how you see the progress and the framework uh, unfold in the days ahead and we can stop uh, the degradation of loss of biological diversity and also stop adverse impacts of climate change as fast as possible, as quick as possible. As Dr. Kazi Kulikusama was mentioning, that adaptation is a huge, huge challenge and also loss and damage. And right now, Bangladesh and India are mm, under the mm, throw of uh, another hurricane is uh, unfolding. So uh, these are mm, a part of our life nowadays because uh, we are under climate emergency. Uh, whenever mm, 
uh, it will hit Udon, whether it is in um, Carolina or um, in the east coast of USA or in the Pacific or in the west coast. Uh, we don't know. So how best uh, we can approach uh, both climate change and biodiversity uh, together. Jim. Thank you, Kamaral. Uh, and I, I agree with what was said. Just one moment, please. Sorry, I was having some problems with my microphone there. Um, yeah, I, I agree with what was said about the G7 being an opportunity for the financing to step up and look at how we can address both the, the biodiversity and climate change issues in parallel. Uh, I was in Nagoya when they negotiated the Nagoya protocol, the, the first kind of 2010 biodiversity targets. It was the first time the biodiversity convention really set out a comprehensive set of targets and it was very, very harshly negotiated. Uh, there were people shouting in the hallways. We were up until three, four, 5 a.m., but we got it done. Uh, and that really did set the foundation Foundation for the post-2020 biodiversity framework to, to, to set a standard for the world committing to biodiversity targets the same way that we were committing to climate change targets. And I'm very happy to see that. But the concern in the biodiversity process, as it was in the climate process, was always about the financing. And uh, the, you know, the G7, the climate environment ministers meeting, they started to talk about financing, uh, but they're talking about financing for things like innovation to help countries move away from fossil fuels. They're talking about financing for adaptation and nature-based solutions. Uh, when I look at Canada's federal budget, and I look at those two areas, innovation for climate, mitigation and uh, protection of the ocean, which is was a big part in Canada's federal budget. The amount of money that's made domest available domestically for climate change innovation is about $5 billion over seven years. The amount of money made available for the protection of the oceans is just shy of a billion dollars and that's split between four or five different budget lines. So the financing for biodiversity is still lagging behind the financing for climate. Now, the, the question around that is, you know, can you really disassociate the two or do you need to look at it as a package? Uh, the impacts of climate change on biodiversity cannot be underestimated. Uh, there are species around the world that are just, their, their ranges are shifting, their reproductive cycles are changing, their ability to adapt the same way our ability to adapt is, is reducing. So anything that we do to address climate change is going to be addressing one of the major um, threats to biodiversity, but it's only one threat. And I do just, when we talk about the International Biodiversity Day, the theme this year is you know, we are part of the solution. And we are part of the solution for all of the threats paying, facing biodiversity, whether it's invasive species, whether it's the destruction of habitats, uh, whether it's climate change. And we need to make sure that we're not so distracted by bringing together nature-based solutions and talking about climate change and biodiversity as one issue that we forget about all of the other significant challenges. And I know you're probably surprised to hear that come because I'm the one who's always saying, I'm so happy to hear nature-based solutions being spoken of. Uh, and I really am, but because today is biodiversity day, I want to step a, back, a little bit back from that and say, yes, it's great that we're talking about nature-based solutions, but I just wanna make sure that when we see the, the financing commitments coming up uh, for biodiversity, we don't have a situation in which uh, the climate and environment minister are calling climate finance biodiversity finance and vice versa. Um, and this is especially important because as countries start to talk about their mix of climate finance, how much of it is going to be loans versus grants, uh, we need to be reminded that nature is still not seen by most people as a good investment. And so if we are relying on loan mechanisms to fund the conservation or restoration of nature, we are going to be in trouble. Because until we change that fundamental perspective about within the finance sector, about returns of an investment from nature, uh, who pays for the investment, who captures the benefits, we are going to be largely reliant upon grant funding. And some of the same issues we faced in the climate change space with regards to uh, adaptation, 
investments uh, and the hesitancy to put private finance into adaptation, we've seen that in the biodiversity space for years and years and years. So I'm interested to see See what the G7 comes up with in terms of their mix of financing between climate and biodiversity. Interesting to see how that finance is structured. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jamie, uh, for uh, say alluring um, uh, the prospect of uh, NASA-based solution. Also, uh, say raising uh, the climate uh, finance as well as biodiversity finance because uh, if we want to um, have uh, biological diversity we need to um, invest in the NASA and also uh, for climate solutions we uh, are opting for NASA based solutions so uh, if uh, we say that NASA based solutions for both the biological diversity and also uh, in a climate change uh, then we must quadruple our uh, biological diversity investment, finance, and also for climate change, finance. But uh, finance is yet to be unlocked. And uh, whatever the seven countries or um, other industrialized countries, these countries are saying, uh, they um, place, but um, uh, it is not integrated in their um, uh, domestic national budget. So if it is not um, integrated in their um, national budget or uh, their um, development, uh, uh, beyond their uh, development support, uh, because uh, this is over and above um, development support, ODA, uh, because uh, climate finance is uh, over and above uh, ODA, but uh, it is not integrated in their national budget. So if it is not um, in their national budget, how can they support? Uh, they can't support. Say, uh, United States, uh, under uh, Donald Trump, uh, they could uh, fund uh, Green Climate Fund. Barack Obama uh, provided one billion, but the next tranche they couldn't release because um, uh, that was not um, released by their Congress. So, and also uh, Trump withdrawn from uh, Paris Agreement. So those are the risks. Mm. Uh, and if it is not uh, integrated, mm, uh, say, internalized in a domestic budget, national budget of these countries, uh, it is not going to fly. Mm. So uh, it will be, uh, say, dollars will be in the sky. Mm. Uh, it is not <laughs> going to, mm, say, be mm, in the most vulnerable countries. It is not going to rescue the people mm, affected by the uh, drought, uh, affected by the desertification, uh, flooding, inundation, or mm, sea bed rising, or mm, uh, say biological diversity losses. Uh, how best you can cope that? So, uh, Lucy, uh, what is your take? How do you foresee? Hi everyone. I I wanted to say I totally agree with what Mr. Zubi talked about that people and corporation and politics uh, don't see the, the purpose and the, the value of nature or investing of investing in nature. I'm currently currently working on climate question, but I think I, I know it's not the point today, but I think we can make um, a parallel with biodiversity question. The main, the main problem I can think about uh, in Brazil, where I'm working currently, is that, and I think it's a global, a global problem too, is that there isn't in, there isn't written in any political pro, pro, program plan of develop, of sustainable development of cooperation the question of biodiversity, climate, the, the purpose of the cooperation are not um, corresponding to the objective we have to achieve to, to fight against these laws of biodiversity, which is, as we all know, a, a catastrophe. And we should, um, we should add the ambition 
and give the ambition and give the inspiration for politics, cooperation, for entities of the public and private uh, sphere to create plan programs, projects, uh, which uh, can achieve this, these purposes. I think that before, before fighting financial problem, we should establish, establish um, objective actions that can actually uh, fight and get the loss of biodiversity before financing, before, uh, before fighting financial, financing solution. Because I think that people will allow to finance will, and when they will, when they will see that we can achieve a goal doing an action. Now say I don't know if it's really clear what I, I'm saying, but I'm seeing that way because we we are just talking and most people are just talking without including concrete action, concrete objective in plan program and project that can be developed to fight against this these problems. And I think that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Let's see. Uh, 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 yes. See. Uh, you have always been arguing in your entire life that the Bretton Woods institutions hmm, are not the solution, especially for the um, countries like Bangladesh, uh, for the countries like, uh, say, uh, in the third world. And this time also, uh, even if uh, climate finance or biodiversity finance is ramped up, even then, most of the slides will be channeled through these institutions. That is the, mm, say, crude uh, reality and tragedy mm, of the commons. So, how best we can do in climate convention and also biodiversity convention it is enshrined that this support will be over and ever ODA and it will not be say loan money it will be essentially be a public finance grant but in reality these uh, multilateral institutions, Bretton Wood institutions, come in, jump in, and try to get. Uh, remember uh, when we had the, um, say, Bangladesh UK um, support, uh, we got 75 million pounds sterling from uh, UK. Uh, that was um, channeled through, uh, say, the bank. They were given the administration, uh, managerial work, but they didn't fly. But Bangladesh uh, own uh, PT, National Budget Trust Fund, hmm, that flow, eh, that is up and running. That finance a lot of, hmm, uh, say, climate uh, programs on the ground. So uh, this is the true reality in not only Bangladesh, but also in many uh, developing countries, African countries, Caribbean countries, Pacific countries. So, how to um, unlock that? How to um, come out of that uh, box situation? It's very difficult. We have been trying for a long time, but it hasn't been happening. Happening. Unfortunately, these institutions uh, have become to the uh, th to those countries which provide the money, the uh, the institutions uh, which know best, and that's not true. We have seen time and again, not only in Bangladesh, but I have done a significant number of uh, UN missions to African and, and uh, Asian countries. And I have said everywhere, they have their, um, they have, they have their solutions um, cut out. And that's more or less for every country, the same solutions. So that doesn't work in the different cultural situations. We have a different culture than, than say Indonesia or African countries. So therefore it has to be set within that context. And they, they have failed time and again to do that. And therefore, not much benefit. For example, I can say for Bangladesh, we have not uh, got that much of benefit out of the money that we have received through these institutions. Uh, so that's that. And that's why you see one of, one of the one of the for climate, uh, one of the institutions is GCF. Uh, 
But DCF has also been following more or less the, the worldwide. Worldwide rules, regulations, yeah. procedures. It is co-financing or it is, uh, it is, uh, it is credit. Uh, it was supposed to be all grant, but it is no longer that. Now this year, there is a, there is a difficulty. Difficulty is COVID-19. And the developed countries are cutting their ODA. Uh, I know of one country, that's UK. UK has reduced their ODA by about 30, 35%. For Bangladesh, they have reduced by 60% because our income has gone up. 60% they have reduced. So are they going to increase funding for climate? That's, a, that's an issue. Uh, can they do it? Most countries uh, should be able to do, but there are countries which may not be able to do that. So there is a, there is a critical question, how much they're going to commit. Uh, they have said 100 billion, but I don't know what, what will happen. And obviously it has been discussed as politics. Uh, we have seen uh, over the years that um, science is there, but when it comes to making decisions, particularly for even I, at IPCC, and IPCC I was the coordinating leader, lead water for the third and fourth assessments. And there I saw when we, we came to uh, uh, preparing sub summary for policymakers, that became political. Up until then, it was science. In many respects, not all respects, I'm sorry, in many respects, it became politics. So politics is there, how can we overcome the politics? And I think now the, our, our backs are, um, behind, the wall is behind our back, uh, not only for the developing countries, not only for the climate vulnerable countries, uh, it's for all the countries of the world develop developing everywhere so i think uh, this politics uh, should now be politics of saving the world politics of saving the humanity not politics of uh, keeping the country perspectives in place only global perspectives and there now people are saying people me they're saying that uh, with this that we are part of the solution with everybody is part of the solution and everybody has to be included in that process and there we see uh, there are serious problems you know uh, this inclusion process uh, is not that much now some people do the talking other people do the decision making uh, there is uh, disconnect often there is connection but often there is disconnect we have seen in the past uh, we have spent the whole nights, and then in the morning, when everybody is asleep, a decision is taken, and that that becomes sort of a decision for everybody. Okay. So there, there there are all of those things, and yet I think we are now uh, at a stage uh, that this dithering is not going to serve anybody's purpose. I think so. Therefore, we should keep that behind, and we come up with uh, workable solutions where everybody can participate. And that's what I expect from the G7 summit. Uh, they would come up with some concrete uh, things. Uh, it was mentioned by Lucy there that uh, there is no concrete things or actions. That's, uh, uh, we have enough actions defined in the Paris Agreement, what to do. But behind that, we need financing. We need the uh, ability to do that. We need technology. But those are not forthcoming and therefore those actions cannot be taken. So therefore, actions behind actions, we have to uh, consider both. Uh, what actions ultimately will take on the ground and what are the actions behind that action to take place? So our, uh, unless we can, we, we can formulate this uh, whole thing, be it for biodiversity or for climate change, I think it's all the same. Uh, we have to go forward that way. Budgeting, uh, Canadian budget, uh, just hard. Yeah. Uh, they have a small budget and they don't have it integrated budget. And if that be the case, then there will be a serious problem if, if it is not integrated. And, and many countries probably will be, will be doing that. So therefore, I have been saying that we should not go to Glasgow if it happens. I don't know if it happens now, it, become, it, it has become more uncertain. So if it happens, we should not go with high hopes uh, as we did in, uh, in, in, uh, in Copenhagen. <laughs> and got frustrated. So we go uh, hard-headed, we try to talk in a hard-headed way uh, based on facts and arguments and then see what happens. Uh, but there, we are encouraged. We just heard that the discussions taking place in the uh, G7 ministerial. So there is an, uh, an element of encouragement there that they are, they are foreseeing 
uh, that there are problems and those problems have to be tackled. Fossil fuel has to be reduced and they are they are forcing that and they are not going to finance anymore for fossil fuel. So, but there has to be a timeline. Now, if it goes on and on and on, uh, then zero, zero, net zero by, uh, by 2050 is not going to help us. Uh, there has to be drast drastic action uh, much more earlier, maybe 20, yeah. by 2030. So these are, these are certain aspects where we need concrete um, actions uh, defined and backed up by technology and finance. Now, one last point I want to make. The, uh, if you provide the money, if, a, if uh, GCF is provided with uh, sum of money, the release of money from the GCF is an extremely cumbersome yeah. process. Yeah. It takes years and years for a project to be approved. Uh, so bureaucratic. By then, <laughs> so has become, by then your situation has become uh, even yeah, uh, 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 unmanageable. Uh, uh, last point, I said last point, the last point is this, that Bangladesh, of course, has been financing from budget. Uh, we have been doing that uh, quite a lot, more than what we receive from outside. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are trying to provide uh, limited um, resources and uh, taking action. And of course, we have our policies and programs and also, also strategies. Uh, but we need much more financing, otherwise we can't implement the strategy, you know, come, uh, the strategy that we actually had okay. and we are now, uh, the more elaborate one should be available very soon. So uh, other countries, I believe, are, are doing that, but they need, they need uh, two things, finance and technology, and uh, on real time, it's not somewhere else in the future. Let's stop here. I stop here. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you are absolutely right. Means of implementation is essential. Without means of implementation, we can't Stop, take. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, concrete Philip, actions. Yeah, uh, you are absolutely either right. Either it is adaptation means actions of implementation or mitigation is actions. On to without means of implementation, or say we can't take yeah, diversity. Uh, concrete actions. Uh, on to that. Either it is adaptation actions or mitigation uh, actions. On to that. FSA, uh, or so say biological we need means of diversity. diversity. So how to on to provision, the make yeah. provision of means of is, uh, quite absurd. That is, uh, so uh, use we need uh, means of implementation. So that trillion so dollar. How do we have to provision, uh, make provision say, of means of implementation? And we have to answer. That is mm, uh, use, use, uh, Jeff. So that trillion dollar question we have to Yeah. The, uh, there's just so many good points about not just the the international financing but also the domestic financing and perhaps i can bring in a word yeah. of hope because i've been the, in this uh, there's just so many good points about not just the, and, uh, the international when I first financing started on the but also the domestic financing and environment perhaps ministers. i can bring in a word of hope and environment because ministers i've been in this international but we only had environment some time and, uh, and when, when i first started talking on the biodiversity done, i remember talking to environment ministers and we didn't have climate investments needed to flow and we have we only had discussions and then uh, you know, and the ministers we were talking about what needed say, to be you know, done, that, that was great to be next steps, prioritized, next where investments I've got to see if I can go with my finance minister. Great discussion. So that might take then, me a few months. Uh, you know, the ministers and there was this stand disconnect say, between you know, that, that environment great. ministers next and finance, steps, next finance steps, ministers. I, I've got to see if I can get on a pedestal. Finance environment minister, that might take me a few months. Shuttled off to the side. And there was this disconnect between environment ministers and level of finance ministers. And I have ministers that put on a pedestal. I've seen environment ministers were filed for capacity. Shuttled off to the side. Respect for climate yeah, environment work given the same level of importance. Years. And I have seen and, and that, that has broken down I've some seen barriers the, the nationally. Profile the ability of environment ministers and the respect for climate and environment ministers. And, ministers, environment and ministers now, this is what we need to do. The past 20 years. This is what we need to invest in. And that has broken down the economy of our country. The ability of environment ministers of our partner to speak countries. directly to finance ministers. And that is a significant political shift. This is what we need to invest in to maintain the economy of our country. There's still much more to do in the economy of our partner countries. But the and fact that, that is we are now a, seeing a significant happening in shift. the domestic dialogue uh, space. There's still much more different to do I between the ministers responsible for environment and climate change. But and those the fact that we are now seeing much and more innovation happening in the uh, domestic dialogue important. space. 
between uh, different now, ministers, the between the ministers responsible for environment right now and is talking about those responsible um, for finance, technology, and innovation. And innovation for biodiversity uh, conservation, is quite important. And sustainable use. Uh, that discussion now, is probably the 10 years behind. The biodiversity convention right conversation now is talking about climate space, uh, technology, and, and innovation. And that reflected in, for in the finance budget, for biodiversity conservation, finance, and sustainable use. That discussion is probably 10 years behind the conversation that's happened in I don't know how long it's going to take for that process to catch up. That reflected in the finance budgets. The finance for innovation is focused on climate. We are, we are seeing progress, we are seeing solutions. Are we seeing I don't enough? know how long it's no. going to take for that uh, process And are we seeing it quickly up? enough? No. Um, but what we, we are, like to we are seeing remind people is we are seeing even movement. When you are get we those seeing resources enough? allocated? No. Uh, allocated and are we seeing even when enough? No. Uh, a country um, says, yep, now we're going to launch a I like climate to bilateral remind program people, or multilateral even program. When it's not just about getting the money allocated, even yeah. when uh, in bilateral uh, countries says, yep, now we're going to well, launch a new climate bilateral program or multilateral program. It's not just about getting the money being approved and a funding opportunity in bilateral finance. Implementation as well. Happening. You tend so to that see that we are now in the next few months. We're taking off a project between the government of Canada, a concept being next approved week and a funding of provided through technical implementation on, happening. Um, climate change. And so that means that we are now Africa. implementing, we're, we're that, taking off a project with the government of Canada. That request for next week for that project uh, was issued over a year ago. So we're implementing on, um, climate change projects of last year, or Africa, two years ago, now. That, we're not implementing the project that tomorrow. request for proposals so for that project that was issued over a year ago. We need to be implementing. Implementing project, the projects of last year or two years ago. Now we're not flexibly. implementing the project tomorrow. We cannot be tomorrow. saying, "All right, so we'll make an agreement, agreement with that the G7." We need to accelerate. Then we'll we come up with implementing some projects, ideas of how we're going to invest that we money, allocating the next resources year. Flexibly. And then a we year cannot later, be saying, "All right, we'll start to make an implementation." And then you know, then we'll, we'll come up with some ideas of how we're going to invest that money in the next project. So the financing that's And then a year later, we'll start to think about implementation. And then you know, in three years' time, we're going to be implementing. Not, starting implementation um, on the that, that's project not for the financing if we're going to hit, hit the challenges uh, in June at the G7. Uh, and so how do we accelerate that? Right now, the acceleration has that's really not, been focusing um, on the, the project. That, that's not feasible. The approval side of it. To hit, hit the uh, I think we need to shift uh, further. So how do we accelerate that? Say, right now, the acceleration has happen. really been focusing um, on as soon as the, the project the, development. We can't have approval side of it. I think Canada's shift further up the finance envelope expired in March. happen. Um, so, you know, we're now in May, the, we, and we can't have a gap, a gap between finance in, commitments. Um, and Canada's, Canada's climate climate finance, not, not a single dollar of climate finance expired. Or new March. climate finance has flowed since so, March. You know, we're now, now May, announced in June, and, and then there's Treasury a gap in September, cut, and, and then Canada's the budget climate finance, finance, not a single dollar of climate finance. Or new climate finance has flowed since March. Now, if they announce in June, and then the Treasury year. Board meets in September, uh, and then the budget gets released in December, and then people start because to think, we're looking at a year <laughs> gap so how in climate we, uh, finance. Solve this, uh, a year. Use, uh, uh, that's too uh, long. Also, say, so uh, this is part of <laughs> life. So how to uh, solve this uh, is a huge uh, question. Uh, and also, say, all said and done by USA, uh, there what I find uh, quite interesting, um, you also bear me out that say after withdrawal of uh, USA there was a love there was um, say frustration among the parties but uh, with the return of United States especially Biden administration uh, at least say uh, after leaders climate summit there was um, some hope ray of hope uh, but how fast it can unfold and unlock climate finance and also means of implementation. Uh, I'm not saying finance alone, but also means of implementation, because means of implementation means more than uh, finance, technology, transfer, capacity building, and also the procedural issues. Say Green Climate Fund. If uh, Even if uh, we mobilize resources, $200 billion, $300 billion, but can they deliver that in next two years? Because given the procedural bottlenecks and also rules, they have framed essentially cut and paste of chap rules, or say World Bank rules, or ADB, or African bank rules. That is not going to say because means of implementation, especially for climate change, uh, climate actions, and also biodiversity actions or desertification 
actions hmm. require hmm, fast track finance because we are in an emergency situation. Yeah. Our planet is hmm, under crisis, yeah. under hmm, hurricane yeah. threats, or hmm, say tornado hmm, threats, even thunderstorms hmm, are now yeah. say uh, killing people. Hmm, more than uh, we have anticipated even 10 years back. So we need mm, to face this crisis situation, emergency situation uh, with a robust mm, climate finance architecture, climate finance delivery mm, mechanism. That should be innovative. That innovation we do require. Lucy. I wanted to bounce back on what you both said, e, and I've seen on climate because innovation. you are the hope. <laughs> the oh? good generation will take over. We are going to fade, fade yeah, out. I, I just, uh, in a couple of years, uh, say, Kuluk uh, by myself or mm, Jamie, we will uh, fade out, and you will uh, take over. So it is your planet. <laughs> How no. you are going to plan that? Uh, I just have a question for you, and. A debate we can create, we can have. I've seen in climate convention, a biodiversity convention, a lack of sanction. Do you think that maybe implementing sanction might severe? I don't know. That kind of pernition can can increase and improve the fact that we are going faster in implementing means of fighting. Of, in, of finding ways to fight against biodiversity loss, climate change, etc. And that's my, that's my question. Do you think that sanction, sanction and punition can be a solution to to increase that that velocity? Yeah. <laughs> we can <laughs> try to explore, but. Mm -hmm. Maybe your generation will take over <laughs> that. Uh, by your uh, last word. <laughs> uh, last word is I want to I want to talk about a bit uh, about the private sector because now uh, we are told that the financing uh, that was promised uh, will uh, largely or at least a half of that will come from the private sector and GCF uh, was they were uh, involving. Uh, private sector in a way. Uh, I had a uh, web the, the um, greenhouse gas emissions in the industry in the private sector, a large part of it comes from, from that. Now they have to also come in and uh, help with the solution as well. But this process, uh, I don't think has progressed very much. Uh, everywhere, every time we had some discussions on the private sector, but not necessarily adaptation financing, I don't think uh, private sector will do much. Uh, maybe very little in fact, because there is no profit to be made. Private sector exists, it's legal, it's not illegal, exists to make profit. And therefore they will go to the sectors where there is profit to be made. Uh, so that has that is another issue I think uh, must be discussed uh, thoroughly uh, in, the, uh, in the various fora and particularly in the next call, uh, how the private sector is going to be involved. How are they going to play their part? Uh, some of the uh, large houses, large industries, uh, global, uh, multinationals, they have expressed their interest uh, to, be, to be available to, to, to do their part. But how? Uh, that remains the question. And I, I have no answers to that. The answer about the, you make a sanction and give it to a the institution, say World Bank money or DCF or somewhere else. They have their rules. Those rules you have to comply with. And after the money has been given to say DCF, it may take two to three years to get a, get a project approved. Because they will send it to their consultants. They will raise 100 questions. You respond to them. Another 100 will be raised. I know I was a member of the, CDM, CDM board, oh, we, did, yeah. we did the same thing. So they are doing yeah. the same thing. The consultants are used a lot. So they raise questions and, and questions again. And finally, 
if you get it, if you are lucky, it might be two, three years, your problem has multiplied many times and the funding that you will get will not be able to solve your problem. So these are some of the issues I think uh, we need to um, clarify, we need to discuss and find some solutions. Okay. And hopefully in these uh, virtual SV meetings um, uh, from 31st of May to uh, July 17, uh, June 17, uh, these issues are also um, under the agenda items, especially um, uh, on a finance discussion. Uh, these are the key issues uh, to be resolved. And also uh, key questions uh, before the, um, uh, say, SBs are market mechanism um, and also carbon pricing, uh, carbon tax, non-market mechanisms, um, and also uh, rule book. The, transposition of the transparency and also uh, say you know, what will be the say base year what will be the say cycle uh, common time frame uh, all these issues uh, nitty gitties uh, say framing of the um, frame work <laughs> framing of the framework is <laughs> essential and also for biodiversity uh, we are framing the um, biological diversity uh, for uh, 2030. So that framing, hmm, how we frame <laughs> is essential because most of the time uh, there are um, inherent problems in framing. So if um, our assumptions are wrong, then our um, say uh, outcome are also um, going to be uh, say. <laughs> may, I, so, may I just make one, one quick point? So we yeah. are overloading 2030. SDG 2030, Sendai Disaster 20, Management <laughs> of this financing of, for development is 2030. Paris, yeah. Paris is 2030. Paris 2030. 2030. And also net zero, uh, we are also having net 2030 is, targets. Uh, 2030 uh, targets. <laughs> we are saying it, but the proposal is 2030. Yeah. So yeah. how we overloading 2030? That's yeah. good if we deliver. <laughs> If yeah. we deliver yeah. at least fifty percent of what, what we are talking about by twenty thirty, yeah. we should be okay. Thank you, uh, Jamie. Your last word. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I think the fact that we're all working towards 2030 is a good thing, because if we fail in one, we're going to fail in all. Uh, so I, I don't think we're going to succeed in everything realistically, but it's, it's good that we have the ambitions to, to work together uh, towards a common time frame. Um, but I, I really like that point about expectations and, and financing, and I think it's we, we need to look at what we're seeing realistically from the private sector. Uh, the UNCCD, the Desertification Convention, which is a third of the Rio Conventions, launched a land degradation neutrality fund. Uh, it's a private financing mechanism to address land degradation. I was talking to one of my colleagues there and she said they had 200 proposals so far of which five were approved. Uh, and that's not unusual in terms of a rate of approval for financing. Uh, and you know, we, ne we need to look at why that is and whether it's really, we always focus on the capacity side. We need to build capacity to develop proposals, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that's the problem. I think that a, pro a lot of the problem is in trust. I think there's so much trust missing from the climate finance and the biodiversity mm -hmm. finance cycles. Uh, that at every step of the way, there's obstacles, there's barriers that are put up, because when it comes down to it, we just don't trust people along the project chain to do their best, to do the right thing, and to direct the financing where it's supposed to go. So until we really build trust in financing. We are going to continue to have delays. We're going to continue to have uh, funds, including the GCF, which are uh, under leveraged, uh, where we have funding money sitting on the table with people unable to access it. So that would be my call to, to the finance ministers, to the administrators of all these funds is you don't just say it's about a lack of capacity, because there you're blaming somebody else look at the trust and where there are failures in trust and how we can work together to address those to ensure that financing flows freely to the people that need it most. Thank you, Jamie. Lucy. Uh, 
I, hey, I, I don't know what can I, what can I say? I never. Your final message. Your final, my final message. I want to give a message of hope. I think so. Hope, ambition, inspiration. As I think that this question of trust is really important too. And I think it's, it's inspiration too. We have to, you have to trust we can do our best. We have to, to trust in ourselves, trust, trust in our partners, trust in our financial sectors, private public sectors to work everybody together to try to, to fight against this question because we only got one planet, you know, and we have to, we have to do our best, I think. I think that that will be it. But let's try to, to do our best to to make this work together. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, your closing remark. <laughs> closing, I think uh, as you said again, that, uh, there is some hope. There is some, there are some movements uh, which uh, give us some hope. And I hope that the hope, hoping against hope, she say, hoping against that these propositions uh, will be built upon uh, as we go forward. And then some concrete actions, all of it we can't get, uh, never hope for, but at least some key aspects, there will be sufficient progress for us to be hopeful about our future, about the, the, this, uh, Percent to 0.5 percent. So he asked him to revisit that and also uh, ramp up climate finance. And he asked categorically uh, to the um, uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson uh, to consider that uh, more than 100 billion per annum uh, should be mobilized per annum uh, from 2021 to 25, uh, so that there is a confidence building um, among the parties so that uh, Glasgow Conference of Parties uh, is uh, going to be a successful one. And also, um, Sir Nicholas Stern, Lord Stern, um, he also uh, prepared a report for Boris Johnson. And in that report, he said that if we can't um, make, uh, say, Glasgow Conference successful, then the climate vulnerable countries and also biodiversity um, loss uh, uh, will uh, say um, uh, cut back global growth, not only the growth of the vulnerable countries, uh, economic growth, but also economic growth of the G7 countries, G20 countries uh, will be plummeted. So uh, he um, uh, also um, uh, warned that uh, this decade ma uh, may be lost if we can't agree on uh, in Glasgow. So there are hope and uh, probably that had some salutary effect in G7 meeting. Hmm. Hopefully G7 uh, summit will deliver and take some bold actions so that uh, say our mm, uh, road to Glasgow will be a mm, quite a silky one, not kinky one. <laughs> With that, I would like to stop here. Uh, See you in uh, another episode. Uh, tomorrow we will have uh, another episode. 
and hopefully we will uh, meet again and have you in a conversation uh, in climate conversation climate action pathways so uh, climate action pathways episode 19 ncr thank you very much thank, thank you. you thank you thank you okay, okay. Yes. না কলিক ভাই আসলে আমাদের আমাদের